and welcome uh, again to Seclair. Uh, my name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and we continue to present our grand rounds uh, dealing with aspects of the human experience, perhaps inviting, providing some enhancements, some nourishment to individuals' life that they can make, uh, make active choices in their life and have a life worth living and live life out loud. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues on my left. My name is Shiva and I'm a medical graduate. And on my right would be... My name is Megan. I'm a physician assistant student at Seton Hill University. And again, we're blessed to be joined by Nancy Fitzgerald, uh, who had perhaps, if you would listen to the previous uh, segment that we had, uh, had a life in the corporate world, uh, dealing with uh, chemistry and science, and found a shift in her life. Uh, found a course in miracles, which uh, involves universal. Uh, spiritual teaching, some self-affirmation, and finding your finding your true your true authentic uh, authentic self. So first of all, I'd like to get the comments from uh, Megan and Riva on the first segment that they had viewed. Um, I thought it was a really interesting way to integrate um, therapy and spirituality and kind of using spirituality as another tool that people can use to help them. Um, achieve greater things and, and some people might be as Megan said before some people might have um, kind of an aversion to using spirituality but I think it can be viewed as an advantage. Riva? Well um, I find it really amazing that how um, spirituality and the psychiatric uh, treatment works together it, I find it really amazing I think um, as far as um, uh, if I think about this book, Miracles, um, A Course in Miracles, I find there's a lot of emphasis on forgiveness. And if I see uh, with the psychiatric settings, there is a lot of patients we uh, go through um, who has a lot of mentally traumatized, a lot of post-traumatic stress disorders. So they have deep resentment inside. So I think that it's that forgi applying forgiveness, applying spirituality in their life, they can overcome these kind of things and can end those cycle of anxiety and stress and panic disorders. So, I mean, I definitely looking forward for this. Well, that's a, that's definitely a lot to process. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, in dealing with uh, many psychiatrists in my life on both sides of the table there and dealing with, with therapy and in counselors that is one of the most sensitive difficult areas that most psychiatrists and therapists have is introducing uh, a spiritual aspect some form of faith in an individual's life could could you share with us some of the resistance that perhaps you faced yourself And you're asking me? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, the resistance I faced myself. Well, um, I belonged to a um, religion for 25 years that is based um, a lot in reason and community and service. And so when I even heard the title of the book, A Course in Miracles, I thought, whoops, I I'm a scientist. I'm all reason-based. I'm not sure I even want to go near that book even though I had several good friends who were already involved in it um, I I resisted it and um, there are some aspects of the religious language and the way some people can choose to interpret it that still um, uh, are, are things that can be sticking points for me it's actually one more thing I find I need to uh, give up for forgiveness It's like whoops I'm feeling that I I don't like the way that's being phrased or it doesn't fit with me and so I say okay I I see this spirit could you please take it from me it doesn't make me feel good I don't like it um, it's all yours to cure to to release to let it go and uh, quite often there there are many uh, oxymorons in the 12-step world and one of the things that you're maybe saying is uh, one of the things we say is surrender to win and that's to perhaps uh, move away from self 
and and ego and deal deal with your authentic self. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the concept that the Course in Miracles brings forth uh, spiritual psychotherapy. Could you could you give us your views on that and a little explanation of your view of it? Well, if, as a uh, one of the last things that came through Helen Shookman and Bill Thetford was um, a small extra pamphlet called um, Psychotherapy, Purpose and Practice. Uh, in that little booklet, it talks about um, healing being of the mind in the same way that Riva was, was pointing to. And um, spiritual psychotherapy helps you understand what kind of choices you can make so that your mind is in a healthier space and then it turns out that when you really make those choices when you do it with some conviction and consistency your body actually follows those choices it gets better without you necessarily doing anything else it doesn't mean that you give up medical support and medical practice and and um, care as you go but that in fact uh, your mind is probably more powerful than anything else you can do to help your body heal. Uh, both these young ladies are from, uh, of course, from the allopathic medicine world where they're taught perhaps a different type of modality in dealing with, uh, in, with patients. So uh, any courses like this in physician assistant school? Uh, no, not, not in my program. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you involved in any of this in uh, your medical training, Reba? No, nope, never. <laughs> I so, think it's coming, but I'm I agree that it's not there now. And in fact, it's just beginning <clears throat> to be um, understood well enough by by people who work with it. <clears throat> excuse me. That um, the the possibilities being spoken out loud, but but as you say it, there are a lot of people. And, and even people who are leaning toward it who get some stuck stuckness resistance and and therefore have their own things to work through some before they can turn around and help others with the same kind of ideas and quite often what we ask people when they approach here to open to approach uh, Seclair's ideas with a, a beginner's mind uh, have some honesty, open-mindedness, and and willingness and willingness to try, uh, and uh, particularly the resistance in in the in the medical world, where again we're attempting to integrate this type of spirituality, some spiritual type of psychotherapy into a person. And one of the one of the things that I'm so impressed when I first met Dr. Chaudhry was that the first thing he does is he's he's an active listener. He not only lets the individuals know that they're being heard, uh, he also listens to himself. Uh, so uh, many times people one of the dialectical behavioral modules that we use is interpersonal effectiveness skills and many people believe that that's that's conversation that's learning how to speak learning how to get your views across however uh, here what we also uh, perhaps the biggest part of communication is active listening hearing and listening and being in the moment not only with yourself Nancy and with other people. Could you share a little bit about the importance of that in the Course in Miracles? A Course in Miracles says uh, one of the lessons says I am the light of the world and uh, we are taught when we work with others to hold that kind of a thought in our own minds that I remember for myself that I am the light of the world and then I as I listen to the person that I, is across from me or with me or on the phone with me um, I hold that same thought for them and with them so that in my mind I'm joining in peace and connection and oneness and wholeness and so I'm seeing them actively in my mind I may not be saying a thing as whole and perfect and complete even as they tell me a story when uh, when they go ahead with their story like who they're mad at or who they're conflicted with or what kind of money problems they have then I don't actively respond to that I might uh, show some empathy or uh, acknowledge that I'm hearing them but I don't feed that story I don't say oh that's terrible tell me more or what how did that happen 
it, I, I let that part of it go and instead in my own self, for my own self and for them together, I hold a higher expectation of happiness, wholeness and perfection and then it, when I listen for the one or two little statements where they acknowledge that the same is true, like, well, that's not really true. Like, and, <laughs> and those are the pieces that I go in with and, and try to listen for and then work with after that. Could you talk to us a little bit about how A Course in Male Girls helps an individual be still and not only listen to themselves, but perhaps uh, listen to the Creator? Well, the, uh, at the lessons, the daily lessons that take a year to go through certainly are a big part of that. And for every lesson, there is a practice session, usually five minutes or ten minutes, uh, maybe once or twice a day. And, and you actually try in little baby steps each day to be a better listener, to listen for a little different thing. Um, today, the lesson is, uh, I am one with my Creator. And, and so in the quietness, the suggestion is that I actually try to find the connecting place between um, me, myself, with a capital S, and the Creator. And basically I just be still and expect that I will receive some kind of message, information, feeling that will uh, affirm that for me. And by continually practicing, I get better at it. I'm still practicing. I'm going through the lessons again this time, this year. And it turns out that, to me, they're always deep enough that every time I go back through them, I find more and more um, goodness in them and more and more help for learning to listen, learning to practice, uh, and seeing how it turns out. As you are well aware, as you helped uh, formulate the original concept of Seclair, we're a facility based on with a mindfulness-based uh, aspect where we ask people to pay attention on purpose and to be aware and present of their current experience. And quite often what we ask people is to be in the moment, to be present, perhaps to uh, watch when they're time traveling and bring themselves back to the present and often it's in the present when uh, if they're there to see them and be aware of them there'll be place, people, places, things, circumstances and events in their life that could provide some type of an answer, some type of a meeting, meaning some type of a motivation for themselves. Could you, could you talk a little bit about the, the mindfulness aspect of A Course in Miracles? Well, A Course in Miracles does teach that there is no past and there is no present and there's only now. Um, and to, to live in the past, to continue to let your thoughts be there, um, means that, that you're not being your true self. You're not um, in the place where you can receive the guidance and, and basically go with the flow of life and, and be able to fulfill your purpose of being happy. Um, one of the ways of expressing purpose uh, in A Course in Miracles is that my function, my purpose is to be happy or to be a light of the world and, and there's, there's multiple ways of expressing it but it basically means that when I choose love instead of fear by being still and listening in this moment then what results is happiness and by being happy I help create that experience around me and it's part of how I teach what I learn so that I learn it better. Well, philosophers have written billions and billions and billions of words, most of them indecipherable and incomprehensible. However, the, the, the bottom of philosophy is how can I be happy and what is truth? So it sounds to me like A Course in Miracles addresses, addresses both of these. I was talking to Megan earlier and there was three particular concepts I'd like her to uh, ask you about that formed kind of the basis of the spiritual psychotherapy. Um, about finding your true self and self-affirmation and undoing challenging thoughts. I actually was thinking about this and I have a, I have a question about it if that's okay. Um, coming from uh, a, a world where we, you know, 
kind of label with diagnoses and, and things like that. Um, there's different stigmas that come along with mental health and, and mental illness. Um, so I was thinking that A Course in Miracles would be good for someone who um, has had these diagnoses in the past or has experienced some sort of stigma. Um, and A Course in Miracles could help by um, using it to look at that person's true self and kind of look past the stigmas that maybe they've um, experienced in the past. Would, would you agree with that? Um, I would agree with that. I think that's a great observation. And I think even as um, allop allopathic uh, practitioners, that to the extent that you can use the labels that you need to describe within your profession what's going on, but not, uh, not pin them on the person that you're working with, that that's more effective. Um, you had some other good things too. Let me see what else I was going to respond to. Um, we have wonderful students here, Nancy. <laughs> the um, the idea that um, you would you would actually have an open mind and 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 appear in every case um, to be to be available to whatever guide is guided to you. Oh, and I what is going to tell you about? I have um, a prison pen pal that I've written to for two years and we were connected because we were both interested in A Course in Miracles and the message of A Course in Miracles basically says no matter what's happened, what you've done, what your life has looked like in this world you are not guilty. You're, you were created the way God is and that's innocent, whole and perfect and so even though it looks like in the judgment of this human world that you're guilty and in, in fact you probably did some things that aren't acceptable in the human world you are nevertheless not guilty and so the A Course in Miracles uh, affirms for each of us either the practitioner or the patient that that is true that there is that that's illusion that we we uh, give that meaning that isn't there and so to let that go um, helps hugely in healing because people can imagine themselves uh, with a fresh start. And what I hear you saying, Nancy, is uh, unconditional positive regard that we may not accept the behavior, however we always accept the person. Yes, and the, and the person is, the truth of that person is the same as the truth of me, which is uh, an extension of the thought of God, so it's perfect. Reva, I see that you have some uh, thoughts. Yes, I do have. So, I was just thinking that uh, it does definite, uh, definitely has impact on me that how to be, to remain an authentic self by not, by not making my mind going to running into past or in future and it could be achieved by making our minds still I guess so yeah mm -hmm. that's what I'm taking yeah. um, as far as undoing challenging thoughts that we have um, I think mindfulness comes a lot mm -hmm. to play into that um, you know, when we, here we talk about, you know, we have those thoughts and we just recognize that they're there and then we let them, you know, pass on and, and you know, we don't dwell on them or carry them around and, and I think that kind of goes along with, with A Course in Miracles as well. Yes, we would say um, that it's important that you bring the darkness to the light, that a fear buried gets bigger and stays there and causes trouble, but a fear brought to light um, allows the, the darkness to go away. So the idea that you, you do go after the things, you admit to yourself the things that you're afraid of or anxious about and you bring them to the light, meaning you say them to yourself or to your guide or sometimes to some other person and then you we, we use the, the language of something like you, you put it on the altar of truth and you allow it to be uh, dissolved in the light. And same as you say, you don't dwell on it, you don't um, carry it around with you, you essentially let it go. You, you open your hands and say, I don't want this anymore, it, let it be gone. And then you trust that it's gone and, and you look for the next thing that's coming along that you want to get rid of because the more you get rid of, 
the more it's just a daily housekeeping chore and not cleaning out your basement. Mm -hmm. uh, quite often <clears throat> we refer to fears as being like vampires that when they're exposed to the light they dissolve. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> could you talk a little bit about one of the core concepts of uh, A Course in Miracles and that's the basis of fear and guilt and dealing with that? Well, the, the basis is that it's a, it's a tiny mad idea that we thought that we separated from our Creator and even the idea that we could be guilty turns out to be um, represented as uh, not possible and, a, and an illusion. Um, so somewhere along the line, which we no longer remember, we forgot to laugh. And, and we started taking ourselves and our humanness and all these uh, ego thoughts seriously. And we've started to act on them and we've built a world around them and we reinforce them in each other and we teach them to our children. And and so it's that kind of uh, mindset that's, I would say, virtually impossible to avoid in this life. It's not impossible to escape. It's not impossible to learn how to do better and better and better. But I think there's very few of us who don't go through that in this life before we decide there must be a better way. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and Reva, any thoughts? Uh, like you have said in your previous um, session that it's about choice. So it's a, uh, happiness is a choice and it can be done by being in your present moment. So that's what I think. Mm -hmm. I agree with Riva and I think that's uh, probably the most difficult thing that people have to um, learn and accept and practice. It really is, it really I think takes practice to to be in the present moment, um, but the more we do it, the more we enjoy it, and the easier it gets. Yeah, agreed. I'm so grateful that uh, my dear friend Ruth Ann uh, had us had us connect. As uh, honestly, Nancy, I had never I had never encountered uh, this this before in my life. So, for the listeners out there, for anybody either viewing or listening, uh, could you could you tell us how they would get involved? How where can they find this program? How can they get in touch with it? Well, A Course in Miracles is um, a publication. It includes a um, 31 chapter textbook, a 365 workbook section, uh, a manual for teachers, and um, a clarification of terms. You can buy that um, online at uh, Barnes and Nobles or Foundation for Inner Peace, or you can walk into most big bookstores and find it. Um, there are also um, many organizations and teachers who um, explain it in their way. Uh, I have been associated with the foundation, uh, the Teachers of God Foundation, which offers an online free 40-day transformation introduction program uh, on uh, that's based on a course in miracles. Um, Ultimately, uh, if you're serious about it, you, you'll want to get the book and see what it is and see what it says. Uh, you may want to read it with somebody else. You may want to join a small group. Also online, you can put in um, Find A Course in Miracles group, and there are several organizations that list um, regular meeting times and places. That's fascinating. I, and again, you're opening my mind up to, uh, to a whole new world. Uh, I see that there's also there's a workbook for students and a manual for teachers. Does an individual particularly require a spiritual guide, a, an individual who's walked on this path before? No, it's actually um, usually billed as a self-study program. Um, I found that I was um, more regular and uh, more engaged when I had at least one other partner and read with somebody else on a regular basis or talked with it, talk, talked about it in a small group. I found that more motivating. It was also true that for years I didn't expand beyond that small group basis. Now I'm in a much bigger group and um, there's also a national conference every year in April, uh, this month, actually in a couple weeks now, um, in New York City there's a, a Course in Miracles conference that will have 500 attendees and about 20 or 25 different speakers and teachers for A Course in Miracles. There are three concepts uh, that Ruth Ann had brought up to me. Uh, forgiveness, ego versus humility, and encouragement. Uh, 
of course, they're all broad topics. Could you address uh, each one briefly, please? Well, forgiveness in A Course in Miracles has a slightly different um, point of view because it affirms that we were all we are all created as God in His image as He created us. It would say that we're all innocent. So forgiveness is recognizing that what I think my brother did to me never happened because he couldn't really be that person that goes around and does mean things. It's it's a way that I allow my mind to be changed about this person and I choose not to carry that darkness and that judgment in my own head. Forgiveness and then what was the next one? Uh, ego and humility. Okay. Ego is um, one of um, two, the two thought systems. One is the thought system of the ego and the other is the thought system of truth. And um, A Course in Miracles helps us discern when you're in one versus the other. Or really it keeps telling us what you can recognize pretty quickly, but then you need to learn how to practice. So you're in ego whenever you are um, judging or feeling guilty or angry or upset or in conflict. You are in truth or love when um, you're in perfect peace, you're joyful, you're happy. Uh, so it's it's actually a pretty easy um, distinction. So the question is, which which system are you in? How do you feel? And then you sort of touch base with yourself and decide, okay, how am I feeling right now? Where where am I? Nancy, could you share with us a little bit about where you're at in your life and what you consider your life's mission at this moment? Well, I am um, into retirement, so I am free to spend my time and energies as I choose. I feel that um, I have chosen to teach only love. I am practicing A Course in Miracles, and it seems that the form in which I practice that um, moves around a little bit, but I don't really think it matters. I think uh, my purpose is to uh, continue to make these choices for myself so that I am the demonstration of what I am trying to learn and to teach so that I'm an invitation based on how I behave and choose and uh, am and people can sense or know um, what the essence of this teaching is because they come in contact with me. So you're talking about modeling, modeling behavior for others as you may be the only textbook in A Course in Miracles that most people ever see. Any, any final thoughts, Reva? Nancy, you have convinced me to do Course in Miracles. <laughs> <laughs> Megan? Um, I think it's just a, a great um, idea and a great integration uh, between spirituality and, and how to integrate that into your life more completely. Nancy, you are a delight. Uh, I, I just absolutely love speaking to you and I wish we could talk uh, the rest of the afternoon. However, uh, I know that you have get on with your life and thank you so much for sharing with us and when you're in Pittsburgh, we certainly, we're going to require you. That's a requirement. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a requirement that you come to Seclair and visit. I would be delighted to come back to Seclair. It's been a while since I've been there. We'd, uh, we'd love, love to see you. And again, uh, please, uh, we hope everyone enjoyed this uh, particular introduction, this course, in Course in Miracles, uh, there are educational grand rounds. Uh, and as uh, always, we're going to close, we'll close with a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, uh, turn off the TV, and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, perhaps you might want to consider fishing without bait. Uh, so until then, your assignment is to be good to yourself. Thank you so much for joining us today.